All right, Jeff Kindler, welcome to GLG. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for sitting down to chat with us. So you have had one of the most illustrious careers in American business. And I'd like to ask you a little bit about some of the decisions you made along the way that, that got you there. I started saying, you know, I should be open to whatever comes along. And that led me in all kinds of paths I never would have predicted. Who I never in a million years would have predicted I would run a drug company or be a hamburger lawyer, but I've done both. And that's because when the opportunities presented themselves, I, you know, got lucky and again was at the right place at the right time. You seem to have figured out the culture at Pfizer pretty well because it wasn't too long before that you were there as general counsel where they named you CEO, which was a pretty remarkable, still a remarkable moment in the history of corporate governance. I mean, there are not that many people who start out as general counsel to, to lead a company. Uh, and, and I think at the time um, you became CEO of Pfizer, there were only uh, six other Fortune 100 companies led by lawyers. I was an ambitious person. I wanted the job. It's why I wanted to be general counsel when I wasn't general counsel, because I wanted to do more, have a greater impact, have a, a, a more valuable job. But I had no idea, absolutely no idea. And in some ways, I was completely unprepared for what really was uh, the scope and scale and complexity of being a CEO. A lot of things happened uh, during your tenure. But one of the most significant, uh, uh, you know, in terms of a historical perspective, was your decision to work with the Obama administration uh, around uh, uh, the health care reform and Obamacare. Will you tell us a little bit about the factors that you considered there? He and the leadership of both houses of Congress were on record in support of a number of uh, uh, pieces of legislation. Uh, and we can argue about whether they're good and bad as, as citizens, but they were definitely bad for the pharmaceutical industry. We as an industry were opposed to those provisions, and we were starting off in a situation where there, there were a good risk of all that happening because of the people that controlled Congress and the presidency. So when the Affordable Care Act uh, activity started, we got approached uh, initially by Senator Baucus, who was leading it in the Senate. Senator Baucus said, we want to involve you to the extent that we can in the process to, to see if we can do something that you would support as opposed to oppose. And it's in both of our self-interest to do that because you might persuade us to adopt policies that, that would be uh, more to your liking, and we obviously would prefer your support than your opposition. Now, uh, what we came to appreciate was the same conversation was being had with every element of the healthcare sector, hospitals, physicians, insurance companies, and there was kind of an environment um, and I understand this completely, that, that was more or less sending the message, work with us or don't. <laughs> and if you don't, you know, the consequences will be whatever they will be. We formed a small group of five of us who were CEOs of different companies in pharmaceuticals with kind of different interests and different focus. And we decided that uh, within the right boundaries, if we could achieve acceptable policy solutions, we would support the bill, and but we did. But many of these other constituencies decided to take a different course. That's correct? correct. Yeah, they did. And you know, others would have to judge, you know, what the outcome for that is. I mean, to this day, there are people who who don't like what we did, even within the pharmaceutical industry. But you know, my view is, I got attacked by both the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times editorial page. And I think when that happens, you know, you're in the sweet spot. I mean, I remember at the time. People said that uh, because you worked with them, you got uh, you got a sweet deal for the pharmaceutical industry. Well, some people think we got a sweet deal. Some people think we made a bad deal. I think what I would say is we came to terms with them on important policy issues. Not on every one. There were some things in that bill we didn't like, still don't like. But on a lot of issues, we were able to achieve our policy goals. Uh, and we made a major financial contribution in terms of uh, increased Medicaid rebates and, and other contributions to help fill the donut hole, donut hole and other ways in which we help finance uh, the, the, the act. Do you have uh, an opinion that you are willing to share with us about, about uh, Obamacare generally and whether sure. you think it's been good for the country and good for people involved? It was primarily, in the end, designed to increase access and to provide health insurance to millions of people who otherwise would not get it. And by those terms, it was successful. Uh, the notion, however, that it fixed our health care system or addressed kind of the underlying fundamental problems of cost and quality, I don't think it did. I don't think it purported to. So we talked about um, 
the challenges of becoming CEO of a big company and uh, how mentors can help. Did you have anybody you could turn to while you were running Pfizer? You know, I will tell you with all candor, Richard, and I tell this to the groups at GLG that I meet with, I did not do that as well as I wish I had. It is such a intense, almost 24-7 position that I think I fell prey to something that's in human nature, was that I did not block enough time for personal development. I think that a lot of us that are kind of type A personalities end up in big jobs and they're so focused on both the fact that they have achieved that and the things that they need to do on it that they stop. It's like not exercising or not eating right. You just don't pay attention enough to the things that are of long-term importance to you because the day's crisis. Right, you want to win that it day. Exactly. Right? You got to win every you day. You got to win that day. It's like in uh, politics, you got to win the news cycle. And there is so much coming at you from so many different directions. Uh, I think most CEOs would tell you that the biggest, the hardest pr problem with being a CEO is time management and, um, and prioritization. And I will readily admit I didn't leave enough time for personal development and for mentorship. I suppose there's a temptation to think, okay, I've made it, I'm a CEO, I've, I've got it, I've done it, I'm, I know what I'm doing. But you never stop learning, you never stop growing. And to do that, you, to do that successfully, you have to be self-aware and really understand yourself. And it doesn't come naturally to type A personalities that are you know, usually pretty self-confident and pretty strong in their personalities, or they wouldn't have gotten to that point. Jeff Kindler, thank you so much for being thank part you. of our GLG Anatomy of a Decision.